So I've been playing around with Unreal Engine lately. It's been a lot of fun. If you're following me on Instagram, you might have noticed some of the things that I posted. And if you're not following me on Instagram, well, you know, you, you should probably go do that. But it's been fun kind of building out little worlds, little landscapes and getting to know a little bit more about the world of virtual production. But I thought that maybe it was time to start trying to incorporate the things that I've been doing in Unreal Engine in an actual video. To, to walk. Now, am I gonna back out or is this a walk past? I think it's, a, it's gonna be- There were a lot past. of new okay. things so. being put into this video, things that I've not really focused on in the past. First of all, not really a, a focus, but I didn't use the Pocket 6K for this video. We actually ended up using the Sony a6600. So the very next shot's gonna be me. Also, I didn't really do any of the camera work okay. this time. I ended up having my friend Tech Examine, Mike Panetta from the channel Tech Examine. He came out, he was my, my DP. I was focusing more on the post-production side, the pre-production side, being a director and being an actor, uh, even though it was only a couple lines, it, it was, you know, that was my focus. So this was kind of my first venture into the world of directing, even though it was just a little bit of a short, it was still, it was still a new thing. The biggest challenge that I thought I was gonna face in this video was the fact that we had elements that were 100% CG. We had shots that were 100% CG, and we were gonna be merging that with the rest of the video, which was shot practically on an actual camera. So I knew we were gonna to have to do some tricks in order to sell that. So there's gonna be some fusion work and there was gonna be some practical effects that we were gonna to have to do to kind of sell it. And I thought that was gonna be the biggest problem, but it turns out the biggest issues that I faced in this video were not what I thought That's they nice. would be at all. Doesn't go any lower than 500. Equipment setup for this project was actually really simple. For the camera, we use the Sony a6600 with the, I think, 16 to 35 G Master lens. And then for lighting, we just used my Nanlite Pavo Tube 6C Mark two sometimes they acted as a key light sometimes they acted as more of a practical light and then for audio we actually used the deity pocket wireless which is their brand new wireless lav setup which ended up working out pretty well do that so the next shot from there the shot um, list for this was really simple there's the script was was literally only three lines long so it just it didn't that didn't take much and it was mostly about getting reaction shots like almost everything that was shot practically was reaction shots and it was just a matter of figuring out when and where i was going to be reacting but i knew a lot of that could be done in post so i didn't really worry about it too much it was kind of like where where do i want to first notice that something strange is going on where do i want to be when i get a closer look and it was just a matter of figuring that stuff out and after that it was it was really really simple i will say this though there were a lot of takes of all of the lines that i did just because i felt like i wasn't getting the delivery right i felt like i wasn't getting the right face when you're acting I have found that like facial expressions are a huge part of it. It's not just a matter of saying the lines. Like when you're trying to act and there are no lines, your facial expressions play a huge part in selling it. And I just, I wasn't getting the delivery right. So there was just, there was take after take after take of these different reaction shots. So I could, you know, figure out the right one to use and post. The main part of this video is me walking up to a window, looking out and seeing this crazy storm that I built in Unreal Engine. And it, it was supposed to be kind of the simplest part of the video. It was literally just all reaction. Me walking up to the camera, me staring out the window, and that was it. But it ended up being one of the more difficult parts of this entire production because it, because of the lighting, really. There's this huge bay window in that room. That's the window that I'm supposed to be staring out of. But with that window open, it just, it flooded the room with light, which should be a good thing, right? But no, it, it definitely wasn't a good thing because we were using my Nan lights put on the lightning effect to give like a practical lightning effect on my face and in the room. And with that bay window open and the, the blinds open, it actually 
kind of muted out that lightning effect. And we didn't want that because it's supposed to be like dark and the big flashes of light and just having the window open was not going to work. So we ended up closing the blinds, which then posed another problem. And that other problem was that we needed to frame the shot, at least the, the first reaction shot in a way where you couldn't see the window. We wanted to see as much of the playroom as possible, but we didn't want the window to be in frame. So that caused us to reframe the shot a couple times and we eventually got it right, but it was actually a challenge. And then for the practical lightning effect, like I said, we put the NAND lights on the lightning setting, which gives you this really cool thing. And having two of them meant that lightning was happening at different times from different directions, which really kind of sold the randomness that was going on. It wasn't just on a set pattern, which I thought was really, really cool. And we made sure to put the lights in a place that made sense, right? So we set them up on the windowsill. So it looked like the lightning was coming from in the window. That actually took a little bit to figure out. At first we put the lights on the floor in the playroom and it just lit up the whole room, but it just, with the shadows, the shadows looked really weird, which is not something I ever really considered before. Like I said, this was, this was a very first timey thing for me. I, it was the first time I really focused on using practical lighting effects. And so getting the shadows right, making sure the light was coming from a direction that made sense. So it would sell the story and sell the effect and sell the CG scene was, it was something that I had never really considered before while making a video. So this was actually a really, really cool little experiment. All in all though, it was actually a really simple shoot. The problems that I ran into all mostly came in post and they weren't the issues that I thought they would be. Unreal Engine is super, super cool, and it's a lot of fun to play around with. I've been building out little scenes for my Instagram. I had built out this like desert canyon scene thing, and I, I wanted to use that in a video, but I knew I needed to do some more work to it. So for the story, I was putting together a scene with this crazy storm. I wanted to make it look like I had been transported to a different dimension. So I wanted this crazy sky, this crazy storm, everything was gonna be red and all that stuff. And I ended up doing the whole red part in color grading, but the storm, I got, uh, it was a pack for like 40 bucks that I got for Unreal Engine called Ultra Dynamic Sky. And it came with a weather simulator and I put it on thunderstorm and messed around with the settings until I got this crazy looking storm. And it was just, it was really, really cool. I don't know if anybody's interested in seeing more things about Unreal Engine and I don't know, some like quick basic tutorials on how I've been using it. But if you do, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll put it on the list because I'm really having a lot of fun. So I got through production and I got through all the Unreal Engine stuff and I had all of those sequences exported and I had it all brought into DaVinci Resolve. And that's kind of when all of my issues began. First of all, when I started assembling the video, I realized there was kind of a big plot hole, not really a plot hole, but it wasn't really selling the point of this story. I wanted to make it seem like my entire house had just gotten transported to this crazy new world, but there was nothing in there to kind of sell that and to kind of tell people like, hey, when this video starts out, we're just in a regular old neighborhood and and all of that. And, I, you know, I could have gone out and just gotten a practical shot of the front of my house and, and use that as an establishing shot. So then people could be like, oh, wow, he looked out the window. He's in a completely different place. But I decided to go with Unreal Engine. I actually ended up finding this really cool residential neighborhoods pack in the Unreal Engine marketplace. And I've been using it to, uh, well, I'm using it as the establishing shot. It's a really, really cool thing. And I just got to add a cinematic sequence in, uh, in Unreal Engine, export that, bring it into Resolve. And I think, I think we might have our final piece. I don't think I did a very good job on making them photorealistic. I thought I could get that done in color grading, but apparently I should have done more work in Unreal Engine. I'm not very good at the photorealism stuff yet. So if you guys have any tutorials you wanna suggest, then let me know in the comments and I will definitely check them out. You know, the 
problem i thought that the biggest problem i would have would be on the unreal engine side and figuring out how to do it but that part was actually pretty easy the problem i'm having right now is this story i i just i i know what the story should be i think i'm pretty sure i have all the shots that i needed but i'm having trouble transitioning from me noticing the strange anomaly that's happening and me actually cutting to the unreal engine part there it, it's just it's not flowing the way that i thought it would and I'm not really sure how to fix it. I may actually have to go back and film something or I I just, I don't, I don't know. This was actually a huge, huge issue that I ran into. I had all the shots that I needed. I knew that, like in my heart of hearts, I knew that. I knew that if I shot more and I put more into the video, then it was going to make it too long. It was going to totally screw up the pacing of it. But I, I just couldn't figure out how to transition from the hallway to the playroom. And I tried a whole bunch of stuff. I tried this crazy little stutter effect and it just, nothing was working. So I ended up just kind of making a quick flash, like a, a four frame flash. I think was what I ended up using as a transition between the hallway and the playroom, just four frame flash of the storm. And it ended up working perfectly. I knew color grading was going to be a huge factor in selling the blend between the practical shots and the CG shots. And so I, I spent a lot of time on the color grading. I did a lot of shot matching using color space transform on the Unreal Engine shots to bring it into a similar color space and color grading it so the colors would all match and making sure that the shots that needed to be red were red. I made sure that the shots of me in the hallway weren't like as saturated as the ones in the playroom. So that way you could kind of get that feeling of I'm farther away and then I'm moving closer. And it just, it ended up working out pretty well. And I, I really liked the way that the color turned out. Sound design on this was actually really interesting. The unreal sound effects that I got just out of the ultra dynamic sky pack, they were cool and they, they sounded really good for a realistic thunderstorm. But when I brought them into DaVinci Resolve and tried to use them in the story, they just didn't sound right. They did, it didn't really sell this idea of this menacing storm that might be out to kill me. So I ended up just doing away with that and downloading a whole bunch of individual assets for uh, from Artlist and just using those to build out my own soundstage for this thunderstorm. And I ended up using like these lightning sound effects and timing them with the lightning strikes in the video. And it worked great. And I had these like hurricane level winds and this pounding rain. And it just, when I put it all together, I had 42 tracks of sound design just for this storm scene. And it just, it sounded, great. I rendered it out as one clip and I brought that into the main timeline and it just sounded great. And then I used those same sound effects just at, you know, lower volumes for the shots in the house. And I did the same thing. I timed up the lightning sound effects with the lightning effect from the man lights and it ended up really selling the scene. And I think that it really, really worked out. So I had a lot of fun doing the sound design on it. Once the color grading and the sound design was all done and everything, I started going through and kind of figuring out like, what can I do to further sell this effect? What can I do to further sell the idea that my entire house was transported to this world, that this CG world that I created was actually a real thing. And one of the things that I came up with was reflections. I started thinking if I was staring out the window at this giant storm, you should be able to see the reflections of that storm in my eyes, especially on a super close up of my eyeball. So I went and did something that I had never done before. And I actually went into fusion and did some creative masking and tracking of my eyeballs. And I ended up putting these fake reflections of this storm into my eyes. 
and it turned out so much better than I thought it would turn out. I'm gonna do a full tutorial on like creating fake reflections because it was super, super cool. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do it. And I just, I really like the way that this turned out. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed, have the bell rung, because that was a really fun effect to do. I'm gonna do a full tutorial on it soon. Okay, you're about to watch this video that I have spent all month working on. It's a, a my first creative scene in this series, and I'm super excited for you to see it. But before we actually get into that, I just want to say that this video would not have been possible without a computer that was powerful enough to handle all of the Unreal Engine work and all of the DaVinci Resolve work. And not just powerful, it also needed to be optimized for that work, which is why I'm so excited to announce that today's sponsor is Puget Systems. They build custom pieces for video editors, gamers, engineers, you name it. And it's not just a place where you go and you pick out parts and then they build it for you and ship it to you. It's not like that. They actually work with you and listen to what you have to say about your workflow and the types of projects that you want to be working on and all of that good stuff. And then they get to work designing a system that's completely tailor-made for what you do. And if you're not looking for a PC, but you're kind of interested to know what parts work best with what kinds of programs, then they have this amazing blog with just this wealth of information. And it's it's just a really, really cool place. And they're a great group of guys. So Puget Systems will be linked below. I highly suggest you check them out. And thank you so much, Puget, for sponsoring this video and for supporting creators like me. All right, here's the storm. Yeah, dude, I just finished filming. I'm on my way, I promise. I'm on my way. GPS has me 10 minutes away, dude. Don't worry, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be late. All in all, this was a really fun project to do. I learned a lot of new skills. I tried a whole bunch of new things and I'm just even more excited to dive further into Unreal Engine, maybe get into some actual virtual production where I'm using a virtual camera and putting a real person into these completely computer generated worlds. I, it's just a lot of fun. This was a fun little story to make and kind of a proof of concept of some of the stuff that you can do with the technology that's around. So it was a lot of fun. Scenes is a new series on my channel where I'm kind of pushing the boundaries of what I think I can do with what I have in order to create these little, well, scenes. I'm already starting work on next month's video, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell rung so you don't miss that. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Don't forget to give this video a like, and I'll see you in the next one.